In one week, the largest flight of C-47s, C-53s, and DC-3s since D-Day will be aloft over the English Channel and headed for France. They call it DAX over Normandy. 75 years ago, more than 830 Dakotas, what the British called the C-47 Skytrain, flew out ahead of the Allied invasion force to drop paratroopers behind the German beach defenses. Dakotas like these. The Dakota, or C-47, was the military version of the DC-3, stripped of seats and insulation so it could carry more. These aircraft are of the D-Day squadron, the U.S. contribution to the DAX over Normandy. They are the greatest generation of men and airplanes who began the liberation of Europe. Some 15 D-Day squadron aircraft are now in, in England or very close. It's actually the same route that was used in World War II. So uh, we will be leaving uh, from here um, and going to northern Canada, Goose Bay, and then we'll go on to Narsarsuak, which is the southern tip of Greenland, uh, famously called Bluey West One, and, and then on to Reykjavik, Iceland, and then Prestwick, Scotland, and then ultimately to the Imperial War Museum at Duxford, England. They'll be at the museum by June 4th, and then a mass takeoff with paratroopers to reenact the beginning of the Normandy invasion. So when you take off every time, you kind of look at look around and you say, well, these, these rivets around me, they actually flew across the channel 75 years ago. It's extraordinarily rewarding. We're really bringing a great group of people together um, for a great reason. You know, again, to, to remember our veterans and also to really uh, provide some level of context for where we are as a nation. So what's it like to fly a DC-3 or C-47? We asked the pilot of That's All Brother. This is the actual aircraft that led the D-Day formation. It was discovered in a boneyard and the commemorative Air Force restored it to its original D-Day configuration. Doug Rosendahl flew the first test flight and is the chief pilot. DC-3 is a glorious flying airplane and it'll do anything as long as you ask it. But if you start trying to throw it around, pushing and pulling and kicking and shoving, it'll fight back. And uh, it's just an airplane you have to come to terms with. You know, you have to uh, learn to speak its language and be patient and, uh, you know, put in some input, maybe a lot of input, but then just wait for a little bit and pretty soon, you know, just on final today, we uh, got into some wake turbulence and I pushed the rudder all the way to the stop and nothing happened, but pretty soon it started coming back and, you know, before it gets to where you want it, you let off and, it's, it, again, it's a very elegant airplane. But it but she won't tolerate ham-fisted pilots. You have to be gentle on the throttles and she's slippery. She slows down reluctantly. If you plan ahead and you know how to ask the old girl to do what you want it to do, it all works out fine. <laughs> so an interesting story about how this aircraft came to be restored. It is, you know, it uh, almost got converted into a turbine version, a turboprop, and so it was amazing that they discovered what it was and were able to raise the funds to restore it and then get it over there too. That's pretty amazing. It's an amazing story.